three Sundays. All right, it's the number one issue in American homes, getting your financial house in order. Well, today in our weekly financial fix, the importance of having a will or some type of estate planning document, even if you're not married and perhaps you're just living together. Karen Lee is the author of It's Just Money, so why does it cause so many problems? And she's also a columnist in this month's Ladies Home Journal. Woo! Yay! Congratulations. It just keeps coming. It's keep coming, Karen. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about 55% of Americans don't have a will. That's an extraordinary Isn't number. It? And I would suspect that maybe proportionately the number may be even higher for those who are single or living very, together because they figure, you know what, why bother? Why? Right. And for 25 years, we've been telling people you've got to have a will, but it's mm -hmm. usually always been married couples with yeah. children. Yeah. And it's mostly been about guardianship. So let me give you a little example before we start talking about this. Okay. Let's say you have a couple our age. They've mm -hmm. been married before to other people. Mm -hmm. uh, they've did, they're living together now. And they let's say they buy a house together, but they put it, let's say, in the man's name and he's got a child from a previous marriage okay. for whatever reason they put it in his name okay she's yeah. paying, helping to pay the mortgage and yeah. the bills and he dies Something no will that house goes to the child she is out mm -hmm. so a will can solve that and the, I think I have had three different times this past month mm -hmm. people come to me with scenarios like this interesting you know a lot of people avoid the whole will thing because they just I don't want to think about I know you know the inevitable they don't want to think about the it's potential true. of something terrible happening but if it you plan awful. then then you, you can at least stop have a worrying about net. it yeah exactly so how do you get started okay, we're gonna start by talking first what happens if you die mm -hmm. without a will it's called dying in test it mm -hmm. and there are laws of intestacy on the books of every single state so the first point is know your state laws because if you die without a will your state's going to dictate mm -hmm. where your assets go. Now, it's typically going to be uh, spouses and children mm -hmm. first. If no spouses and children, then you're looking at parents and siblings. But let's say you have none of that, and but you do have stuff. If you don't have a will, the state's getting your stuff okay. and your money. So no will equals no control. Oh, I, would, my goodness. I would think most people would want to leave stuff yeah. to a friend or a oh, charity. Yeah. I think once they hear that scenario, yeah. maybe that will inspire them. Right. So, um, is that really a, a will? Is that the only way or the smartest way in which to let family members know it's, it's your not, intentions? Right. It's not the only way. There are two things that trump mm. even a will, and that is the actual registration of an asset. Mm. So in our example, if a couple did buy a house together, joint tenants with rights of survivorship, mm -hmm. it wouldn't even matter what the will said. It would go huh. to the other one. So registration of accounts you can actually title your bank accounts yeah. to Frederica Whitfield transfer on death mm -hmm. to so-and-so. And lastly, anything that's got a beneficiary designation, so life insurance, IRAs, and 401ks, all have a beneficiary designation, and that also trumps. Is it a problem if that will. contradicts no, your will? No, that goes first. Your beneficiary designation is going to be number one. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes people think, you know what, I've written it I've down written it. somewhere, right. I put it in a safe, that's going to be enough. Handwritten wills versus one executed by an estate attorney, etc. I have to tell you, a handwritten will is pretty much a thing of the past. They used to call them holographic wills. Mm -hmm. and I'm not even online. People well, that's that going to be a, another thing? one of our points. Well, let's okay. first talk handwritten. I would avoid mm -hmm. at all costs. I, I looked, I uh, did a bunch of research and mm -hmm. virtually no states even take these anymore. If they do take them, there are very specific rules yeah. to how they must comply. I'm always asked about online will writing services. I'm going to start by it's saying thing. something's better than nothing. I mean, if it's hard enough to get people, but, okay. but you know, I'm going to tell you what my lawyer friends tell me. What? They tell me that the legal jargon varies so much from state to state. It's so easy to mess mm. up and it could void your whole will. So, so I'm saying on this investment. one, skip the flat screen TV this year and Aww. get yourself a will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, when should you update a will? Say right. you have one or you've had one for... 10 years, 15 uh -huh. years, marital status changes, family structure changes. Exactly. You're hitting all my points there, and I'm reluctant to even bring it up because we're trying to get the 55% mm. to write one in the first yeah. place. But if you have a will already, yeah. you do need to update at any time with birth of children, uh, changing your marital status, mm -hmm. any substantial life changes, mm. estate planning. So I'll give myself as an example. I wrote my first will two weeks before my first child was born. Yeah. I updated it probably seven, eight, ten years later because we were starting to build assets mm -hmm. and the estate tax laws. I am waiting about three more years. My youngest child will then be of majority age, and we're waiting for some estate tax laws to get fished out in this, ne this uh, new administration. So often. 
you so, often have to make modifications. I would say you're probably looking about every 10 years. Also, if you move from one state to huh. another, it's recommended that you yeah. at least seek legal counsel. All right. Very important. And, you know, this, this really is something that, you know, couples will talk about. Well, uh, married couples yes. will talk about. Families will talk about. But and so children. often when people live together, they don't think and that this applies to them, exactly. but it should. And when I wrote that article for yeah. Ladies Home Journal, it was about the married couple. And I thought, you know... This is something everyone needs to be thinking about. Right. All right. Yeah. Karen Lee, thanks so much for helping us think about that and actually Thank act on it, too, with that great advice. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Fred. All right. And, of course, you can get more information from Karen's book, It's Just Money, So Why Does It Cause So Many Problems? Or reach Karen at KarenLeeAndAssociates.com.